It's the Real Estate Podcast, brought to you by ANZ Home Loans for financial well-beings. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Breakfast as we cover the very latest in property news. We do that every morning, as you know, seven days a week. And you can hear us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, of course, Apple Podcasts, as well as Amazon. Working week, it is starting to dissolve a little bit already. Thursday, March the 21st, is it? Yeah, 21st, looking at the calendar. Got to keep up with the calendar because it's moving at a rapid pace. And just a couple of days ago, of course, we had the RBA decision not to move move off that cash rate and this morning we are welcoming back PRD Chief Economist Asti Mariasmo and good morning to you Asti. You wouldn't be too surprised by the RBA would you? Good morning. Not at all to be honest with you. Uh, The RBA has been talking about holding the cash rate for a while right now and the latest projections are for them to hold the cash rate so not a surprise on my end. Yeah, well, it's the fourth month and we are stuck on that 4.35% cash rate. So how do you think that this is going to affect the household finances and uh, mortgage accounts? Because the longer this goes on, the longer the holding pattern remains in place, the more likely people are going, yes, time to get back into the market. Well, with the fact that it is on hold at the moment, the RBA is not going to meet until another couple of months. Before they meet again, it will be six months that we would have 4.35 cash rate. So that will really help the household budget plan their expenses because everything is steady. And that's a real change from 2022, where pretty much every month there is a different household budget. This time around, um, households can sort of, you know, rely on the fact that their mortgage repayment is not going to move. Of course, we know that banks don't always follow what the RBA is doing. So banks can still increase their interest rates. So the household budget does um, have a higher chance of staying stable. People can plan better in terms of their finances. Um, We have seen an uptick in people contributing to their mortgage offset account. So we had a massive mortgage offset account across the country when we came out of COVID because a lot of people weren't spending on holidays, entertainment, things like that. So they put it onto their mortgage offset account. That did go down with the cash rate going up. But now that we have a steadier cash rate, then there's a bigger possibility of mortgage offsets being rebuilt. Yeah. And if you have a look at those household finances, I mean, the point about that is the whole stability is great, as you have just highlighted. But the knock on effect of that is that property prices are moving, aren't they? Yes, they are. There is definitely higher consumer confidence right now in the market. Um, People are starting to think, yep, now is the time to go and buy a property, especially because there is some talk that there might be a cash rate cut towards the end of the year or early 2025. And we all know that when the cash rate is slashed down, that there is more people playing in the market because that increases the borrowing capacity. So we are seeing um, a spike in the market at the moment. There are definitely more inquiries, more people going to open homes, more people thinking better get on the bandwagon right now while the cash rate is still steady before it drops down and there's more competition in the market. Yeah, and especially for our friends, our first home buyers that are looking at this now, starting to lick their lips thinking, yes, this is good. It is remaining steady. We don't want to see any more movement around the cash rate. And talking of those first home buyers, when we come back, if you are a first home buyer, we are going to just highlight from a couple of years ago, which is interesting. I'll tell you why we're going to be doing this in just a moment but it's interesting for our first home buyers and some of the areas that you could be looking at so we'll do that after this 
gain insights with exclusive conversations from real estate professionals about buying, selling and investing across Australia. Well, according to Knight Frank's latest research, Sydney ranks fourth among 12 global markets for super prime residential sales activity in the fourth quarter of last year. The Global Super Prime Intelligence Q4 2023 report highlights a notable 11% increase in global super prime residential sales volumes compared to the same period in 2022 with 411 sales across the 12 markets covered. Now specifically, Sydney witnessed a significant uptick in super prime residential transactions with 42 Two sales recorded in Q4 of 2023, and that is doubling its previous quarter figure of 21 and nearly doubling its sales from Q4 in 2022, which stood at 22 sales. So there you go. If you are in that super prime market, Sydney ranking fourth. Listen to in-depth discussions with industry leaders on investing options, understanding different suburbs with insider perspectives and exclusive tips. And it is a Real Estate Thursday and welcome to it. We are back with PRD Chief Economist Asti Mariasmo this morning. And as mentioned, first home buyers. Now, it was very interesting going back. Now, it's back to 2022 and some of the median prices for Queensland was $740,000. Sydney, $1.4 million. Melbourne, 975000 And Hobart, 790k. Now, the average state loan, Brisbane was sitting a tick over 525000 And yes, this is the, the average mortgage loan back in 2022. Sydney was 749k, Melbourne 621000 and Hobart was 469. Quite interesting looking at those numbers there, Asti, because we know, of course, it has moved and it has moved upward. It definitely has. The good news is that it hasn't moved up for everyone. So if we, there has been some movement. So Sydney at the moment, as of December quarter 2023, is sitting at 1.59 million. So that has gone up. Brisbane at eight to five thousand. So that has gone up. Hobart um, slightly down at seven forty, and also Melbourne a slight decline at nine oh nine thousand. There is some good news in terms of how the price, how median house prices have moved in the past twelve months. There is some more affordable capital cities at the moment, and that's just because their market was hit harder throughout the cash rate hikes um, and also the consumer uncertainty. But in overall, as an overall country, we have seen an uplift in our median house prices. Yeah, so we're going to be talking to you in a couple of weeks' time because you've got another one of your reports coming out. But first, before we talk about that, we want to take you back to a report about top affordable major regional areas. And coming back to our first home buyers, one of those areas was Mackay, located in North Queensland, of course, also known for its close connection to the the Great Barrier Reef. It was all kind of on the up and up, and I think people are still moving to Mackay because of the affordability factor. Definitely. So this particular report um, is something that a lot of our first home buyers and investors really look forward to. Um, Because as we know, there has been an increase in most capital cities' median house price. Um, It is pricing out quite a lot of first-home buyers and investors. And so it's providing everyone with an alternative to capital city investment or home buying. We did definitely um, identify Mackay as one of the top areas in Queensland last year. Um, So who knows, it might still be one of the top selling areas um, for this year, or there could be other 
regional areas that everyone could look forward to and could invest in. Yeah, so who knows what is going to happen. We will bring that to you in a couple of weeks' time. And the top affordable major regional areas that you also did was in New South Wales Federation, which sits on the New South Wales and Victoria border just west of Albury. So first home buyers are moving in there as well. They definitely do. And there has been a quite a high level of infrastructure and commercial development in regional areas. And so it is very attractive for first home buyers to go out outside of the capital cities, making a life in regional areas where a lot of the property prices are, you know, between 40 to 50 percent cheaper. Um, They know that there's good jobs there. There's economic growth. These are areas that um, also have what it, whatever it is that they need, whether it's commercial spaces, restaurants, pubs, cafes, movie cinemas, all of those sorts of things. And it's a, you know, a much more affordable way to live and get into the property market. Gee, I'm just sitting here thinking, imagine if we didn't have the internet and the the internet wasn't a thing, (laughs) these numbers would be completely different, wouldn't they? It definitely would be. And I think, you know, having internet connectivity and the whole, we can work wherever we want to, um, we are seeing an increase of first home buyers moving out to regional areas, but still having jobs in CBD and that they might commute, you know, once or twice a week to go into the office or that they're completely remote and they do work from home Um, or they might go into a satellite office you know nearby once or twice or maybe three times a week so you know I think the workspace um, and the way that we work have really changed and we know that COVID was a catalyst for that but it does open up more possibilities for people to take advantage of more affordable regional places. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about people moving perhaps from New South Wales into Queensland, but let's not forget there are Aussies in Vietnam, in Thailand, in Indonesia, all living there with cheaper residential properties, much cheaper, and doing their work very effectively uh, thanks to the broadband. You know, we are seeing more and more of those type of groups and communities happening in different um, Southeast Asian countries or Latin American countries. We know that it's been quite a big thing in European countries for the past 10 years or so, but it's even more so now in a lot of different countries that does have a much lower living cost than us here in Australia. And they are making these communities where, you know, there's a shared co-working space. Um, They're supporting each other in creating content and they are making use of the much more affordable living style. Yeah, they do that in Dubai. They're called digital nomads. And exactly to your point, the developers are actually catering for this cohort of people. So they set up all of these uh, these shared facilities. So you can buy an apartment, but maybe on level one, there's like a business hub that people can work from. I mean, what a fantastic idea. It is. And our government is starting to head that way as well um, with build to rent. And that's why when the federal budget was released, there was a specific incentive for build to rent um, so that we can foster more investment in that particular asset class and create more of them. Um, There has been quite a few that are successful, but mostly in Sydney and Melbourne. The federal government thinks that, you know, it could be something that is widespread across Australia, not just in capital cities, but also in the fringe regional areas that is about an hour, two hour away from the capital city. And, you know, at the same time, it is built to rent. And, um, you know, the, the thinking there is that it can solve some of the rental issues as well. Yeah, I'm sure that the more advanced thinking by developers in this space, I mean, it's a waterfall effect. They're going to win by that, as are the people looking for that type of property. Hey, we've kind of run out of time. We could talk all day about this, Asti. We better get some work done. And thanks for coming on to the Real Estate Breakfast once again. Enjoy your Thursday. 
Thank you so much. Have a great day. We connect you to the best real estate information across Australia. The Real Estate Podcast. 